These stories I'm gonna tell you about protection, about adventure, about love. It's some of the most amazing, in my opinion, not because of me, but because of the acts and the behavior of the dogs that are involved in them. This is why once you own a Doberman, you'll own one forever. You guys, these are my personal stories about this breed, about the Doberman Pinscher. And these things are some of the major things that made me really fall in love with this breed and actually led to Doberman Planet being what it is and as we know it today. And the first story I have to tell you is backpacking together with my first Doberman, okay. Cooper. This first story, guys, this is my first Doberman and I had no idea at this time what this breed was all about. I didn't know how owner focused they were. I didn't know how protective they were. I didn't know how great they were off leash. I didn't know all these cool things that I was about to discover on this three day overnight backpacking trip with just me and my girlfriend at the time up in the mountains of Northern California. We took my Doberman, two year old Doberman Cooper, my very first uh, Doberman that I ever had, actually the one that led to Doberman Planet. We went up there and we packed up everything we needed for this three day adventure up in the mountains. And we even had our Doberman carry his own supplies in his backpack for the trip as well. He had his own food in there, his water bowl, his leash, all this stuff. We're in a very desolate remote forest. And let me tell you, in the three days of backpacking up through trails and unmarked crossings through pastures and forest and rivers, we never once had our Doberman on a leash. Our dog had zero desire to walk away from us. I believe that now, knowing what I know now, this has to do with the protective nature of the dog um, and how owner focused they are. We even went to some river crossings and in these river crossings, there's areas where a person could cross like using a tree to jump across, but a dog couldn't. So we'd cross and Cooper would watch us from the other side of the um, river and we would walk downstream or upstream on the shoreline. And this dog would watch us across the river and follow us up or down the stream until we found a good place where he could cross. And he was completely off leash. He could have run away, but he had no desire to. And then we'd find a place with him to cross and then he'd cross. He was focused on us. We could control him, instinctually control him from across the river. And this is not something we taught him. The off leash behavior is nothing that, that we instruct him to, is just through normal interaction day to day with us. And he even started instinctually laying down out in a field right near our tent when we would sleep overnight. And he would watch our whole little campsite in the evenings and the mornings. Um, of course, we had him with us inside the tent. I mean, my jaw was was hanging open when this was just happening. I could, we could control him remotely on the other side of a river and help him go up and down and find a place to cross to join us. This was an unbelievable memory for me. The next really eye-opening event that happened to me really highlights the protective nature of this breed and more importantly, their ability to read just any situation. Now, it was one evening, it was late. I had Cooper out for a walk. Um, he was, again, a, he was a two-year-old Doberman. He's about 100 pounds, you know, um, and he was pretty intimidating looking, but he was a total sweetheart. We had him around people all the time. He walked by neighbors and said hi to them. He was a very friendly dog to everybody he met. We were out in the evening going for a walk and we got in kind of a iffy part of town. And when, when I got there with him, there was somebody raking their lawn. It was a straggly man. Um, he had just bulging veins on his neck. He was tall and skinny. He had scabs on his arms. He was talking really fast and knowing what I know now, um, he was clearly under the influence of something, in my opinion. And he started talking very loudly about my dog and about, you know, me taking him out for a walk. And I was trying to continue on my walk and he started coming closer and closer. And he had his rake with him, a large rake. And again, I didn't expect anything from my dog because of how friendly he was. And I swear people have done this with Cooper around him before this and he was totally friendly. But for some reason, this person in this situation, maybe how he was acting, how loud he was talking, whatever, he gets close with a rake and Cooper lunges at him, barking repetitively, pulling on the leash and makes the guy back off going, whoa, 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 and drops the rake and goes, okay, okay, you're good, you're a good dog and backs up and we continue on our way. I had never seen this out of my dog. This was instinctual. That's the second story that it hit me like a ton of bricks that, man, I love this breed. My next favorite memory, it's really a group of memories, but it was when I finally started Doberman Planet 
And it got big enough that we got an office and uh, I, a small little office. Actually, it was just me there. Um, and some of my older videos, you might've seen my old office. And um, I would bring uh, Arlo uh, with me to my office there. Now dogs weren't allowed, so I'd have to sneak him in. But I'd sneak him in real early through the side door, up the stairs, down the hallway, finally into my office. But I will say it blew my mind how flexible this breed was. He had no problem going with me at all hours and staying with me, how much he wanted to be right there with me and how I could literally install if then statement. These are now that I'm in animal behavior, I know a lot. I know that this is called a contingency. It's basically an if then statement. I essentially installed uh, a statement in him that if we walk him through the door of my office, then he used to go to his bed in the corner of the office and lay down. And he was my buddy all day. It was amazing. I actually did a video about it. It'll pop up in the corner of your screen long ago. Back then when I had that office, you could see me actually training him to do this. And um, I used uh, habit, the habit forming tendencies in the Doberman. I was like, is this like programming a computer? Another one of my favorite memories was with Arlo. And it was going hiking up this big giant hill, even in the dead of summer with all the heat, um, going up this big giant hill near where we lived. You know, we'd take the leash, we'd go on a walk. Um, and we get to this big cattle gate. Now this was public land. It was open for people to hike on if they wanted to. And Arlo just, he didn't care as long as he got to be with me. I literally would lift him up over the cattle gate and set him on the other side and climb over the cattle gate myself to go on this hike with him up this hill. And this was something that we loved doing together. And I'd make him bring his own water bottles, his own water um, bowl. And, um, you know, his leash, I would just zip and put in his backpack a lot and he'd just carry the leash. I didn't even have a leash. And, you know, at this point, I was a little more experienced. I already knew how off leash capable the Doberman was. So I just rolled with it. I brought him up there. I had him under verbal, verbal control. He stuck right by me, had no desire to wander off into the hillside. He very easily could have. And we would hike up to the very top of this mountain with a great view of the whole town. And, you know, just knowing and feeling that I was up on top of this hill with a protective dog, a loyal dog, a dog that had zero desire to wander away from me. That was one of my favorites. We even found a, um, a uh, swing up there, a tree swing, a swing you sit on a tree and he would, he would sit down next to me as I swung on that, that little swing that's attached to that tree and we just watched the whole world go by from up there. Okay, now I'm gonna share with you what had really the biggest absolute impact on me as an owner. In fact, it's what directly led me to start Doberman Planet in the first place. But first, I do wanna give a shout out to the sponsor of this video, Ollie. As you've been hearing in this video, these amazing moments I've shared with my Dobermans, they really highlight just the special bond that I've developed with them over the years. But you know what? Part of building that bond is doing everything you can to make sure your Doberman is healthy and strong and energized for all of your adventures. That's why what you feed your Doberman is really incredibly important. Their diet has a huge impact on their energy levels, their coat, and that's why I recommend Ollie's fresh, human-grade dog food. Their meals are formulated with vet nutritionists and are packed with real ingredients. There's no fillers, no byproducts, just wholesome, real food. And it's just like feeding your dog the way you'd feed yourself. Dobermans are active, high-energy dogs who thrive on proper nutrition. So whether you're out like just making memories with them in the outdoors or working on their training or just lounging around the house, what they eat makes all the difference. Now, Ollie delivers fresh meals right to your door for your dog. And with our Doberman Planet discount, you can get 60% off your first box. So that way you can at least try it with your Doberman for far cheaper than you might have thought previously. Trust me, it's a game changer for your Dobie's health. So check out that link, I'll have it in the description down below and just treat your dog. Treat your dog to something better than just dried out balls of kibble with the huge impact that these dogs have on our lives. I really truly feel like they deserve it. Now what had the biggest impact on my love for this breed, what actually led to Doberman Planet. It was really just the time in my life when I brought home my firstborn son and at home we had our first Doberman oh, Cooper. Yeah. And he was an adult at that point, an adult Doberman. And just through instinct alone, he was the most gentle, caring, watchful, protective dog over our new baby. Again, this was nothing I taught him. It's like a switch flipped in him. We brought home this new baby and this huge, powerful Doberman started watching over him 
and literally would be bouncing off the walls, excited one moment, chasing a rope toy, and then walk over near where the baby was like laying on the ground and start almost tiptoeing, like walking really slow. And it just, it blew my mind how integrated this dog was with our family, how powerful and protective he was, how owner focused he was, and then how he just naturally became a giant softy for my firstborn son. So that kicked off a huge passion to me about the Doberman breed. And I started DobermanPlanet.com. Really, it was just as a hobby. That's all it was. It was an interest, a fun thing to do on the side because I liked writing. I would research the Doberman breed, re read studies. I would write up technical things about what I learned. And I would just try to teach people everything I knew about the breed. And it happened more and more. And then before I knew it, I was like a couple hours a day, many hours a day, I was reading about Dobermans and writing about Dobermans. And before I knew it, DobermanPlanet.com started getting a lot of traffic uh, because of how well-researched and in-depth and factual all these articles were. Then I decided to take a stab at YouTube and I made my very first video. It's titled, How Dangerous Can a Doberman Really Be? And it'll pop up there in the corner. I'm very embarrassed by that video. <laughs> if you go and watch it, you will see me a lot younger. That was the very first video I did and I started making videos as another means to teach people because I knew that video was just a great way to reach more people and help more people. Honestly, I'm really excited though because right now we're moving into a whole new area again with Doberman Planet with Dobe Masters. It's not like a training course that we charge you for, it's nothing like that. It's a free series of videos that you can watch of me training a dog for one of my clients from start to finish. It's a really cool way to follow a Doberman and, and I don't think any other trainer on YouTube is doing this, we're publishing publicly all of the training materials we give to the client. So we give them homework, like a, a printout of homework and the commands to do, and all that is available for download on PDF. So you could actually not only watch me train a young Doberman puppy from the beginning all the way through, but you can get and download the homework assignments that I give to my client and actually train your dog along with it. I'm really excited for these new heights that Doberman Planet is going to because of Doby Masters. Don't forget to subscribe to us guys and share your memories down below. I know you want to if you owned a Doberman. Share your favorite Doberman memories in the comments. Thanks for hanging out with me guys. Uh, keep watching out for Doberman Planet and uh, I'll see you next time.